People believe in many different things. I believe in the existence of ghosts. With my fellow investigator Nicole, we capture much of our evidence through the spirit box, also known as a ghost box. Sometimes we get nothing, and sometimes we hit the jackpot. This is our evidence, and this is Minnesota Ghost Box. Across the Mississippi River from downtown Minneapolis is St. Anthony, Maine, which is the birthplace of Minneapolis. Over the last couple of years, there have been new condominiums put up in the area, but one place has stood the test of time. The Soap Factory. This location is now a successful art installation, with one of the scariest attractions in Minnesota taking place in its own basement every October, aptly named the Haunted Basement. Since the first time I've ever heard of this place, there has been some confusion as to what occupied this building. I was originally told it was an artificial limb company, but Greg Grumman, president of Winkley's Orthopedic and Prosthetics, told me that such companies only existed on the other side of the river in downtown Minneapolis. I then reached out to the Minnesota Historical Society to see what they knew about the soap factory. They didn't have much, but put me in the direction of author Adrian Lee's book, Mysterious Minnesota, Digging Up the Ghostly Past at 13 Haunted Sites. The building we now call the Soap Factory was built in 1883 by the Union Railway Storage Company. Its main tenants in the 20th century were the National Purity Soap Company from 1924 to 1992. You can still see the name of the company on the side of the walls. The Soap Factory has been in this place now for over 25 years. All the lights off. I didn't know where it was. Joining us on our investigation tonight is Tanya Preston, who works the soap factory's haunted basement and is also a paranormal investigator. Later, she'll show us around the building, but before that, we brought in Brady Jeunesse and Tam Prose from the paranormal group Twin Cities Paranormal Society to share some of their many experiences of this location. Twin Cities Paranormal Society was founded back in 2006 in October. From throughout the years, talking to the former leaders and current leaders, uh, the Soul Factory has never, never failed, and uh, something has happened each and every time. This is the this is the area then that um, something pretty creepy happened with a phone call. Right? Yes. Yes. So so what happened then? I think this was back in 2013. Um, Will Ventling, one of our former uh, leads, along with uh, Heather, another investigator, we were just about to start our very very first uh, session for the evening. I remember it was still light outside, and the craziest thing happened. Um, before we started our 10 minutes 10 minutes of silence and starting the session. Uh, Will's cell phone rang, and Will answered the phone. And on the phone was a little girl asking Will if he needed help. And I cannot make this story up. It was just crazy. Did he say anything? He, uh, at first, you know, I, I want to give him credit. He was very calm. Wow. So did he did he say anything else to her, or was that really just the conversation? That was pretty much the conversation. And he didn't recognize the caller or anything like that. Um, but he did answer the phone. Wow. So we are in the coal room, and the last time when we did our investigation here, there was a lot of stuff in here, and it's been com pretty much completely cleaned out. And then when you guys have been in here, you've experienced, uh, we've experienced a lot of activity in here. You've experienced activity in here too. Correct. This is more where I started my spiritual journey okay. uh, with the paranormal. 
Um, it was actually very, very overwhelming, and I was not aware of, of what the team has found previously. So when I was in this room, um, I felt, um, and, I, and I actually saw an image, and I was overcome with sadness. And what I saw was a lady in a white, dirty dress, and I feel she was being tortured. And I did see a gentleman, I think there was more, more than one individual involved. When you think about this place, um, it was abandoned uh, for, for periods of time, and uh, only one could think of what type of behavior that could have happened or exhibited here. And where I got validation was at the end of that evening. I was so overcome, I actually called um, uh, Amy, who was a sensitive at the time for our team, and she validated, yes, there was a female tortured uh, in, in this location. And I was also not aware of one of the most compelling evidence Twin Cities uh, Paranormal Society has, is we do have an EVP of a female screaming. We're in a very confined area here. This is what they call the boiler room. There is a big boiler on the other side of us over here. And uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to get you and Brady out here, because it's one of my favorite uh, pieces of evidence of all time that happened to you in this room. Um, as you said, we're by the boiler, and it hasn't been used for at least 70 years, from what I've been told, uh, about the history of uh, the soap. And I was here with another investigator, and we were standing right about here. And all of a sudden, there was a loud bang in, with sounded like it was coming with from within the boiler. We both jumped. <laughs> I said a bad word. Um, and at the same time, we heard uh, like a breath coming out and then like taking a breath back in. And then about two minutes, we radioed upstairs to make sure that it wasn't one of our team members. They had heard it upstairs as well. And then about two minutes later, there was a second bang coming from out of the boiler. Jesus. What the hell? Jesus. What the hell? Have you ever heard of anybody else having anything like that happen down here? I have not in my time with the team. I've been with the team since 2008. See, I yes. love it. It's my favorite. It's it one of my it's favorites. It's one of my pieces. favorites too. I was was really ha happy that I had my recorder going. It's evening at the soap factory, and we're being shown around by Tanya. Tanya knows this place very well, and has had many paranormal experiences here. This place is just dripping with history. And you never know what you're going to find here just by walking around. This seems about right. <laughs> Tanya points out some areas of the soap factory that gives it its character. That thing is cool. Isn't it? This is, uh, this is the old like relay of like the whole <sighs> basement. That's the, the old relay for like everything electrical. Really? Yeah. God, that's beautiful. Yeah. This is an old elevator. This, oh wow. Um thing right here is an elevator and the motor for it. It's like right over there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And we built a we built a deck so we can pass through it. My son last year we were doing uh we would come down and do do laundry for for uh the basement and uh, I would set up a, a train track with mm -hmm. him. As Tanya continues to show us around, something happens. We would we would sit down here for hours doing all that laundry. Oh wow! I know, right? Oh. So we would be down here for four to six hours for sure. Um, but he would set up his. Did you hear that? Is mm -hmm. that really good? Yep. So um, <laughs> that's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but yeah. So uh, he. As you can see. Tanya is so used to hearing odd sounds, it doesn't even phase her. At this point, we decide to take out some of our gear and see what evidence we can capture. We go from no activity on the K2 to spiking. There was nothing around the area that would cause this to happen.
I had heard something to my right. Kind of like a... Like a... M- really? Mm-hmm. Look at you. Yeah. And me. Do we want to try an EVP thing here at all? Or do you not? Sure. It's up to you. Not? I mean... We're a, here. A burst session? Yeah. The EVP burst session was a bust, but we know how active this place can be. Nicole and I have been to the soap factory before, and here is some of the evidence we picked up on our first shoot in 2015. The room we decided to start in was one where a person on a ladder said he saw a full-bodied apparition of a little girl. We felt this was a great place to start, and Nicole explains the gift we brought for her. So we have this little puppy for the little girl who's been spotted down here, walking right across this area from behind us and forward through that door. Um, So we thought we'd bring her a little present. I reset the camera so we can see the flashlights, and Nicole asks all the questions. If anybody's playing with that flashlight, thank you. My name is Nicole. Hi, nice to meet you. So if this is by chance a little girl that has been seen in here, would you turn that flashlight off for me, please? If this is the little girl, thank you very much. Do you have a sister? If you have a sister, can you turn the flashlight on? I'm just trying to make sure. You do have a sister. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Next, we went to a room down the hall where we carried out a spirit box and flashlight session. All the shadows you see on the walls are ours, and there's a lot of dust in the room. We first wanted to know who's in the room with us. Can we have some names, please? Amber. Amber. Is there anyone other than Edward in here right now? There's some females in here? Thank you. May I get your name, please? Did, were you out in the other room with us just now? I see, thank you. During our investigation in 2015, we have cameras set up in other parts of the building, like next door to where we're doing our spirit box session, and up on the third floor. Are you happy that we're in this room? That's just part of our 2015 investigation, and we'll share more later. But more importantly, we're about to begin our main investigation with Tanya. That's when things come alive. There's definitely stuff going on in there. Someone's running around upstairs. Are there a lot of people in here with us right now? So, we have just heard um, a couple pretty big bangs upstairs. Wait, was that door always open? 